How's it going? This is Raul from QVN Kennel. Today we're going to be going over five things uh, that we look for uh, whenever we're going to be buying a pup. Uh, keep in mind, there's many ways to skin a cat, uh, so to speak, uh, but these are the guidelines that we follow, and it kind of uh, sets a price in our head. Uh, a lot of times people want to buy a pup, and, and they, don't, they don't know how to determine price. Uh, so I'm just going to give you a, a general idea as to how we go about it and uh, hopefully it can help you out okay uh, like I said we're gonna break it down into um, into five parts uh, the most important part is number one um, who are you are you a breeder do you plan on breeding or are you just looking for a pet I mean are you looking for a dog that's gonna be a working dog I mean these are the questions you need to ask yourself uh, from the very beginning because they're gonna establish uh, the guidelines for you as to what you're going to be looking for uh, when it's time for you to uh, buy your pup. Uh, what I normally do, um, which is the, the most evident, is you look at the pup's front. And uh, one of the first things that I look for is that the pup is not east-west. Uh, that's like a major thing uh, for us here. Um, east-west is nothing more when, when uh, the two front paws are pointing outward. Okay, it's, it's a very common um, fault uh, amongst the bully community, especially on the bigger dogs. Um, again, not every kennel has that, um, but it is, it is out there uh, quite a bit. Uh, so we're looking for that. We're looking for the chest and for the shoulders and for the front uh, legs all the way down to the knees and to the pasterns and to the paws to be symmetrical. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for symmetry. If the pasterns, which is kind of like their, their wrist, if the pasterns are dropped, you know, for us, that's something that, you know, we will definitely overlook a pup uh, for that. Uh, if the pup is slight east-west and it's been on an outcross, meaning that um, both parents are, are not being line bred from the same bloodline or even inbred for that matter, um, I might consider it, uh, depending who I have in line uh, to breed to that dog. Uh, but 95% of the time, if I'm seeing east-west, I'm pretty much just uh, staying away from it. The next thing uh, that I look at um, is uh, the top line. Uh, you look at the dog's top line. The top line is nothing more than the dog's back. Um, if you're seeing that the front of the dog is higher in other words that the back is on a slight uh, decline uh, that's that's actually not the worst thing uh, you, you, you do have to keep an eye out though uh, for the back legs as far as what type of angulation they have on, uh, on the knee and whatnot um, but the one thing you definitely um, might want to stay away from is high rear okay high rear all it means is that instead of having a decline okay you have an incline the, the 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 back rear is is taller than the front um you want to stay away from that uh it's not the hardest thing to breed out uh it really isn't uh top line is usually a good top line a good straight top line is usually a dominant trait uh but again you you know if you can avoid it go ahead and do so um if the dog has a high rear, for example, and say it's unavoidable and I must purchase it, definitely I'm looking to lower the price of the dog. Um, I'm not paying $3,000 for a dog with a high rear or, or anything like that. Um, you know, whenever I see a fault like the ones that I'm talking to you about, we're immediately bringing down the price, okay? Now, you could have a perfectly good dog, okay? It's got everything that you want, but it has one of these faults. Uh, as a guideline for us, uh, typically uh, we're looking at that being a $2,000 dog. Uh, that's just us, and that's just our guidelines, okay? Uh, you might want to pay more, you might want to pay less. Um, but typically when we see one major fault and it's definitive and it's showing, we, we're not going to pay more than $2,000 for a pup. Uh, that's that's just us okay um the other thing you want to look at is the rear okay um a lot of times you'll see a dog with with an awesome front uh but the rear may be narrow okay um you're gonna eventually 
if if that's what you you know if you want to wind it eventually you're gonna to have to breed to it the more that I have to breed to a, to a fault or to something that I want to fix the more energy that I have to expend fixing something I start lowering the price so if I see a dog with a narrow narrow rear again uh, I'm probably not going above two thousand dollars for that dog and he must be perfect on everything else pretty much um, one of the other things I look at is the head uh, the head for me is important uh, because you don't want a dog with a beak, okay, with too long of a snout. Uh, you also don't want them with too short of a snout, okay? Creates a lot of breathing problems. Uh, if you if you have a dog that's awake and um, and snoring, uh, if I see the parents and I, and I see that the father and or mother is is awake and snoring and, and you know they're not running or anything, usually I shy away from that. Uh, only because that might, you know, you got health issues that are that are coming along with that, um, you know. So we we try to steer steer from that. The other thing I like to look at, um, and I'll go back to to the front is I like to make sure that my chest starts where the elbows. Uh, you know, if you were to draw um, an invisible line, you would be able to see the elbow, and then directly in front of it, you would see where the chest starts. I like that because I normally like my dogs to be athletic. I like my dogs to, um, you know, be able to run and be agile enough to be able to turn on a dime if they have to. Uh, if you're looking for a working dog, that's one of the things you want to look for. Um, also, uh, really important, and I know I'm, I'm adding more things than the five I talked about, is when you let the puppy down and you let the puppy move, is the move seamless, okay? Is the is the move is the puppy moving in a in in, in, in the puppy's uh, top line moving, you know, in a smooth manner? If you see the puppy running and and it's kicking out a back leg or it's kicking out a front leg, or you know, it's just kind of wacky in its motion. Um, normally, I try to shy away from that as well. Uh, I, one advice that I normally give people when they ask me and they're buying a pup. I always tell them I value uh, dogs with shorter backs more than I do dogs with longer backs. And that's mainly because with a longer back, you normally bring a lot more, more issues. Um, if that back is not perfectly straight, if you're just, if the rear is just half inch higher than the front, it's gonna be a noticeable uh, high rear. Uh, you, people are gonna call it slight, but the minute I see it, the minute anybody sees it, they're gonna realize it. So um, all in all, fam, uh, I hope I've given you some good guideline tips. Um, when I find a dog that pretty much has everything, uh, what is everything that I'm looking for? Um, the things that I'm looking for is I like the H frame. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen the post I've done with Fireball. And that's uh, where when the dog is stacked looking forward, you can literally write the letter H in front of him and um, you know fit it there perfectly. Uh, Personally, I find the A-frame dogs to be just a little bit cheaper. Uh, in my view, uh, we will uh, not pay more than $2,000 for a dog that's, that has an A-frame. Uh, matter of fact, most times, more times than not, I'll probably just pass on it. Um, we're looking for those knees to not be bulging uh, because bulgy knees, uh, particularly on these bigger breeds, is pretty much cartilage growing where bone should have been growing. So it's actually showing a weakness rather than a strength. Even though it looks big and bulgy, it's really a weakness rather than a strength. Uh, that's another thing that we normally stay away from. Um, and like I said, I like a symmetrical front, symmetrical frame up front. Uh, I look at the top line. If there's if there's some high rear and I have a perfect dog that I'm going to be breeding to, you know, I might consider it, but I'm definitely bringing the price down on that. Um, I'm also looking at the rear angulation uh, on the angles of the legs in the back. Uh, we'll be going more in depth into that on a following video. Um, what else do I normally look at? Oh, definitely temperament. Um, I, I look at both parents. I like to see their temperament, have an idea, you know, what I'm bringing home, especially if you have children. And, um, you know, again, uh, you before you buy a pup you need to ask yourself you know who are you what are you looking for uh, are you looking for standard 
Uh, if you're looking for standard, everything that I said is probably something that you might want to follow. It won't hurt you, uh, but you could definitely add it uh, to, to the things that you're looking for. If you're just looking for names, you know, that's, that's real easy. There's, you know, it's probably the bigger of the two markets, plenty of names out there. I've seen a lot of big name dogs uh, with faults, you know, uh, not to say my dogs don't have faults. Definitely have dogs that have faults. Everybody does. Um, but with that being said, um, if you're just looking for names, you need not bother watching these videos. All you need to do is um, just find a big name and, and, and buy yourself a dog. Uh, again, if you're looking for a pet, um, you know, being said that you're not necessarily looking for a show dog, you do want to have a dog that doesn't look sickly for you, uh, that doesn't, that you um, can tell is able to move uh, with fluidity. Okay, if you're seeing a dog that's moving stiff or erratic, um, you might want to reconsider, uh, only because you may be buying yourself uh, more of a problem than anything else. Okay. Um, so when the dog is walking or, or even, you know, running towards you, is it in a smooth manner? Is it kicking out legs? If it's kicking out back legs and you're, you're looking for a pet, that shouldn't be too much of an issue for you. If it has a high, a high rear, a slight high rear more than anything, you know, that's, that shouldn't be an issue for a pet owner. Uh, if you're looking for a dog that's a pet, uh, normally I don't pay more than, I wouldn't pay more than $1,200 for a pet quality dog. Um, and you know breeders such as myself and 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 others such as our affiliates uh we classify our dogs as to who's a show quality dog who's working quality dog or even just breeding quality dog and then we have that pet quality dog which we only sell with a spay and neuter contract because we don't want that dog to reproduce fam i hope i've, I've given you enough information giving you an idea uh, as to, you know, uh, market range and also what to be looking for as far as uh, a bully. And, uh, you know, this has been QBN. I welcome all of you on board uh, for checking out our app. I want to send a special shout out uh, to all of my moderators, uh, Jessica Hawk, uh, Robert James Ward, uh, you know, Bobby Lee York. Uh, I could go on and on. Uh, Stephen Fife, uh, Peggy Barnes. Aaron Sheffield, I mean, Blaze Smith, I mean, they, they, you know, I really appreciate you guys and what you guys have done for us. Uh, we're finally on board. The video today has been recorded, uh, but pretty soon we're going to be doing it live and we'll be throwing it uh, over here in this channel. So, again, I want to thank you all, and I hope I've uh, given you enough uh, information to, to be helpful. This has been QB&K. Peace out.